Okay, this video is a long one, but it gets better and better until the end, which I have to say is amazing. I'm so excited with what I have to show you today. I'm gonna to be showing you styling things up for next fall, shortening and adding buttons to a little jacket, and then taking a dress and turning it into basically a travel wardrobe. I'm gonna raise the legs on this swimsuit. First time I ever thrifted a swimsuit, but I'm okay with it now. And making just like a little travel wardrobe. It's, it, this is actually an amazing one. You gotta watch right to the end. Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. You don't normally see me sitting in my car, but today I'm thrift shopping in Chilliwack, BC. It's absolutely pouring rain, but I'm stopping at the Thrifty Boutique and I'm gonna see what I find inside. If I find something good, I'll take it home and upcycle it and I'll show you the whole process. So I'm glad you're with me. Let's go see what there is in the Thrifty Boutique. Okay, so this is everything I ended up buying. This beautiful gray wool coat from Alfred Dunner and I love that coat. This one I wasn't 100% sure of. It's from Tanjay. It's kind of cute, but I don't know if it looks a little outdated, but it was seven bucks and I like the fabric. These little denim shorts, I just thought were so adorable for my son's girlfriend. They're embroidered and super cute. And then two swimsuits, like that one's a one piece. So that one was $6. And then this one, there's no bottoms, that's okay. I have some black bottoms already. I like that little detail with the ring and it was also $6. And then you can just see that little kilt poking out from behind. I forgot to give a close up on it, but you'll see it in a second. Okay, so I did great with my thrift shopping in Chilliwack and now I'm on my way home and I'm stopping in Aldergrove to check out the SPCA thrift store. So let's see how I do there. One thing I wanna look for is some kind of black sheer sort of fabric to make a sort of a, a swimsuit cover-up skirt to go with the two swimsuits that I bought in Chilliwack. So let's see how I do. So I wasn't super hopeful about that one because it looked a little bit on the grungier side, but I found exactly what I was looking for, like a skirt that's sheer, it's lined, but I'll be able to just get rid of the lining and that's my swimsuit cover-up. How good is that? Okay, so I had a blast thrift shopping in Chilliwack and Elder Grove. That was so much fun. And I found some really great things. And the take home message for me was to never restrict myself to one season. I bought things for fall and winter, spring and summer. And if I had just told myself, you know what, it's May, I'm just gonna look for spring and summer things, I would have missed out on some really great pieces that I know I'm gonna love next fall and winter. So I guess the theme for this week's video is multi-seasonal thrift shopping. So I'm gonna style these ones up and show you what I have in mind for those. And then this one, this little jacket, I'm gonna see if I can style it up and wear it to work tomorrow. And then I've got some pieces for the summer. I also did get that cute little pair of cutoff shorts for my son's girlfriend. Friend. So those got snapped up right away. So let's look at how I plan to wear the gray coat and the kilt. So this is a beautiful Alfred Dunner wool coat. It's pure wool. The quality is so nice. It really is a beauty. Now, I don't know what these retail for because it's not in season. Who buys a wool coat in May? But I did see online that they sell wool coats almost exactly like this by Alfred Dunner, 100% wool. These sell at Poshmark and other online secondhand retailers. It sells for like $135. That's a good score because I paid 10 bucks. So here I paired up that gray coat with a darker gray pleated skirt, a little belt with a silver buckle, my red cashmere sweater, and then my red and black beret that I made this past year. I added a little scarf that combines all the colors together and then black leggings and my little black ankle boots. So that's a look that I'll definitely enjoy in the fall. But then there's a more casual way to wear that coat. I put the coat with my colorful sweater that I cropped this past year, and then a striped scarf that picks up some of those colors, and then just jeans and my Adidas and a cute little gray cap. And then also for next winter is this kilt. And I wish I could say that this is 100% wool, but it's not. It's polyester and rayon, but it's really cute. And I'm gonna have fun styling that up next fall too, but I'll show you what I have in mind for this. For the kilt, I kept my red cashmere sweater on and added a kilt pin that I just happen to have. And if you can see, that's a thistle necklace, which is very Scottish, and then a black beret. And then I wanted to funk up that kilt a bit. So I put it on with my stomping around boots and this amazing belt that I bought years ago, my yin and yang pendant, my big black turtleneck sweater, and a black cap. 
This is the one I was least sure about. I just don't know. It's Tanjay. Tanjay is a Canadian brand. I think the owner is on trial right now for sexual misconduct. Got a bit of sketchiness associated with it. I still like it, but when I put it on, it just didn't feel very current. But when I fold it up one side to make it a little bit shorter, that gave me a better vibe. So I'm gonna be shortening this jacket. Now it has this nice curved corner here, which I'm not gonna be able to replicate. So I'm gonna do kind of a cheater's way of just cutting off some turning up a nice new hem, trying to make these front corners as nice and neat as I can. I'm also wondering about putting some bachelor buttons down the front just to give it almost more of a denim jacket feel, but I think that's enough to freshen up this look. So this pin marks where I want the jacket to finish now. So I'll be making it a little bit more than three inches shorter, but of course I still want a good size hem. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna cut that original hem right off. I've got it folded in half, nice and even, and I'll just Follow that edge, it starts to curve up here. So I'm just gonna follow that edge and cut right through that nicely curved corner. It's a shame to lose that nice curve on the corner, but I think that's okay. I'll make a nice new hem. So I'm now just gonna surge straight across here. Now I had a viewer comment that she felt left out. She doesn't have a serger, she felt left out when I talk about like, let's all just surge. I don't want anyone to feel left out. If you don't have a serger, no problem. There's lots of different options. So you can just zigzag your edge or you can turn a small amount, stitch that down and then turn a bigger amount. That just might be the way I'm gonna go. I don't want anyone to feel left out. And that actually is a really great way to hem this. So, all right, let's do that. So if I just start with a, like a little quarter inch turn, I'm gonna stitch that down and then turn again. And that will, I think, give me sharp enough corner. That's actually nicer than surging because I wouldn't want my surged edge to show there. So, all right, let's do that little quarter inch turn. Okay, so the front part of the jacket is multiple layers because of the pocket, the pocket lining, and the facing and everything. So I'm going to sew those layers together just at the edge of my presser foot. And then I'm going to trim away the inside layers. So that reduces the bulk a little bit. And then just do my little fold. And then I'm going to sew close to the folded edge. It's really nice to have that line of stitching to show me exactly where to turn. I could have easily just gone the whole way right across the back as well so that it would keep me nice and consistent here. This fabric has quite a bit of stretch to it and it looks like my hem is getting a little stretched out. So let's see. It went all wiggly and that is definitely not the look I want. So to the rescue is this knit stay tape. This one is from So Keys E. I bought this online, not at Amazon. I think I bought it directly from So Keys E, but I will put a link in the description to this. And it's just a really fine like trico kind of weight. It irons on and stabilizes knits, but also it'll stabilize a wiggly edge like this. So first I'm just sort of easing those wiggles in with the iron. This is not a knit, but it has a lot of stretch to it. So I do want to have that stable as I do this little hem. So there's a gluey side and a non-gluey side. You can feel the little bumps of glue. So those little bumps are going to go down onto the wrong side of my jacket. And this just irons on and prevents it from stretching back out. I'll just let it cool before I move it. So now I can do that second turn and not be bothered by this wiggly edge. It won't stretch out anymore on me. I definitely don't want this corner coming out past the edge. So I'm going to make sure that one is in nicely. Even if it means I have to do a little pinch in here, I'd rather do that than have that corner stick out. So I'll pin my way across and then sew that second fold. And same thing on this edge. I'd want to definitely make sure it's not sticking out. Okay, so I'm using that dark navy thread that the original one is sewn with. 
So I guess that's fine. Before I sew, I'll just compare the two sides of the front and make sure they are even Steven. So everything is done with a double roll of top stitching on this jacket. So I'll sew my first row up along just basically following the line I already sewed, and then I'll sew a second line. Oh, and I just increased my stitch length to 3.5 millimeters, just to duplicate what's already here. And then right off the edge, and then I'm gonna come back the other way. So I'll just put the left hand edge of my presser foot along the line I just sewed and one more line of stitching. Alrighty, I'll give that a little press. Okay, so now that it's shortened and looking so cute, now I want to add the buttons. So I ordered this package of bachelor buttons. I call them bachelor buttons, but that I guess is a sexist term. They are no sew buttons. The um, instruction manual is covered over by the sticker, so that's fun, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So I'm hoping that there are five silver, maybe even seven. If there are seven, I might put them on the pockets too. Alrighty, so I'll pop one of them in the back end of my buttonhole presser foot. And then to mark my buttonholes, the neck has a band and so that buttonhole is going to want to go horizontal. So I'll start here and go there. And then all the rest of them will be vertical. So I've just marked just the top and the bottom. And when I do five, I just fold. So I'm bringing kind of the center of this to the bottom of that fold. And there's my next one and fold. Bring those two pins together. There's that one and fold. Okay, so that's five evenly spaced ones. Normally on a flap I would go vertical, but because I was all this bulk, I don't think it's going to go over that very well. So I'll go sideways. I don't want to mark the middle. I want to mark where I'm going to start. I'm going to guess about there. That should be fine. Let's sew some buttonholes. So because some are horizontal and some are going to be vertical, I'll choose just the plain buttonhole. I don't really want to do a keyhole shape when they're vertical. This goes on. Button in the back. The little lever comes down. The little jacket goes behind. And when I'm going horizontal, I want this edge right in line with that silver line, like where my needle plate hits the plastic part. And I want to be centered on that neck band kind of on an angle because the neckband is on an angle. And I've changed a white thread because I thought that navy would be too heavy looking for buttonholes. Okay, and now on the vertical ones, I just want to be centered on that placket. I'm starting at the pick of my pin and centered. Okay, that's good. So now trimming threads and I'll be snipping those buttonholes open just with my favorite little scissors. Wiggle, wiggle. Don't push it in. <laughs> you can imagine the bad things that can happen if you push the blade of the scissor in. Just wiggle, wiggle and snip across. Some people like to use a seam ripper for this job and I do not like that at all. Yeah, really bad things can happen. Even if you put a pin at the end of your buttonhole, I've seen the uh, seam ripper just jump right over that pin somehow and just cut right into the garment. Okay, and now with one of my friction markers, I'll get that all lined up nice. Oops, wrong edge is on top, there we go. I need a color that's not actually in the print. <laughs> so there. Yeah. So at the level of each of these little marks, I'm going to poke a pin through so that I can then mark it on the wrong side. And I want it to be centered on this placket. Good. And then we're going to be putting one of the screws. Not all bachelor buttons have an actual screw. Some of them are more like a nail. I haven't actually dealt with this kind of one before, but it comes with its own little screwdriver. It's making its way through. That's kind of nice, kind of easy actually. And then the button goes on that screw. Well, that's exciting. I like that a lot. Okay. And then of course my friction marker dots will easily just steam off or iron off. No problem there at all. Okay, I'll finish these and then spring is done. 
and I'll show you the finished product and I think it's going to be cute. I just love this little jacket now that it has the buttons and it's shorter. Now I think it's kind of got a much cooler vibe, a little bit less outdated. I think it's actually great. I will wear this one a lot and I love it with just these vintage guest jeans that I also thrifted. Aren't they cute? And plain white t-shirt, Bob's your uncle. This is a good one. I'm really glad I picked it up. What was it? $7? And I just wasn't at all sure about this one, right? But you know what? Just those little changes make a big difference. The length, the buttons, and then it just feels a lot more like me. So spring is done. Let's move on to summer. So now the biggest change for me is that I looked in the swimsuit section. It was a really nice thrift store, very well organized, very clean. So I felt a little more comfortable than I normally do. Like normally I just skip over swimsuits because that's just a little too intimate for me but you know what my stepsister elaine on her youtube channel she thrifts swimsuits and i just adore her and if she if it's good enough for elaine it's good enough for me plus i thought you know what it's kind of silly because as soon as i get home from a thrift store i throw everything in the washing machine anyway so really what's the difference so i've washed all of these but not the coat and the kilt that would not wash up too well so i kind of like hung them up separate i really should run them to the dry cleaner but that coat's gonna be pretty pricey to dry clean. But for the swimsuits, I thought, why not give it a go, really? Because as I say, I just wash everything anyway. So it's just kind of like when you go to a restaurant, you eat off dishes that other people have eaten off. They've just been washed, right? So is that a good analogy? I don't know. So these have been washed and I really loved the way these two swimsuits looked kind of as tops. Now I'm not gonna wear them as a top, but I'm picturing myself on a cruise or at some resort and I wanna go from the pool to the cocktail bar and I just wanna throw on a little black wrap as a swimsuit cover and I wanna look elegant. So I chose these two because I thought they looked really, really pretty as a top. This swimsuit top doesn't need anything. I have black bottoms from another suit, so that's fine. But this one, I love the whole top, like this like strapless look is really gorgeous, but the legs are oddly low. Like I'm not a fan of the current swimsuit trend of like where there's no back to the swimsuit, but I think a higher leg is more flattering. Now I'm not gonna be modeling these swimsuits before or after, like no, 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 no. So you'll just have to take my word for it that it's gonna be more flattering, but I will show you how I'm gonna do that. Altering the legs of this suit, making them legs higher, but still keeping the back covering. Okay, so to raise the leg opening on this one, when I had it on, I drew a line with my scrap of soap. I don't know if you can see, but there is a good clear line coming right about there. I'll make sure the two sides are the same in a second, but you can see I'll be cutting off. Oh, that's a good two inches. And this whole part of that seam will get cut off, but this part I have to open up so that I can get in there. Also, I have quarter inch wide swimsuit elastic. So this is chlorine resistant, salt water resistant. Like it doesn't break down as easily as regular elastic does. So I don't have to unpick this whole part because I'm chopping it off only from here to the other side. So I'm just slipping the seam ripper through those stitches. And there are multiple <laughs> layers of stitching for sure. This is the final stitch, which is that uh, double row of top stitching on the outside side. But let's get that out first. Okay, so I was hoping that once those looper threads were all cut on the inside, that the straight stitch lines on this side would easily pull out, but <laughs> that does not seem to be the case. Okay, so if that's going to take a long time, then, oh, you know what though? Once that is out, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's pretty good. That must have been some kind of special machine that just did everything all in one go. When I replace it, I'll have to do about three separate steps. Alrighty, so if this is going to take me a while to open up, then I will take my favorite little gadget to the couch and I'll just be able to use the light and the magnifier to just open that right up. That will be much easier if I can just use this. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I just opened up the inner leg part and now I'll be able to cut the outer or the upper leg. So I've got this little panel pinned back in place just so I don't lose that edge. And now I'm just gonna take the whole thing in half. I think that'll be the easiest way. I am glad that I'm removing this old elastic because 
Look, it's pretty much shot, whereas my new elastic is really good. Okay, so I'm taking everything in half so I can cut the two legs the same. So now I want to cut from that raw edge, and then I just want to be about a quarter inch away from my new line there, just because I still need to add seam allowance. So I'm going to eyeball that. I think I'll be fine. And don't be confused as to why I'm using some pins and some clips. Honestly, either one is fine here. So that looks like a better shape, doesn't it? Oh, I think that's going to be much more flattering. Okay, so now I'm sorry to leave out people that don't have a serger. I am going to serge these edges now, but I don't necessarily have to. You could skip that step and then just pick it up again when I sew the elastic on. So just come with me to the serger though. I'm serging around both legs and... I like to break up this step. Some people do like to serge the elastic on right on this step. I find it, it just gives me a bit more confidence if I serge first and then zigzag on the elastic. But if you have more confidence than I do on swimsuits, then you go ahead and serge the elastic on right at the same time. So to put the elastic on, I'm using a zigzag stitch that's 3.5 millimeters wide and 3.5 millimeters long. And I'm just going to see if this needle can handle this fabric, like this universal needle. I think it's going to be completely fine, but if it does start skipping stitches, I will switch my needle to a stretch needle. So I'm just starting with my zigzag doing a back tack. Okay, once the back tack is done, then I just stretch the elastic just like this, just like just the smallest amount, just like that. And so I'm zigzagging the elastic to the inside edge of that surged edge and with just that small, small stretch. So this swimsuit is only lined at the front, so I'll know when I'm on the back. And right here at the back, like under the butt cheeks, that's where I'll just be stretching the elastic a little bit more. Notice that I'm holding the elastic straight and I'm just bringing the curve of the leg to meet the elastic. And then just a little stretch. Okay, so in this section, I just stretch just a little bit more. So instead of just that, I'll go twice as much. So the first stretch, I'm tugging back maybe half a centimeter. And so this time I'll do like almost a full centimeter. And just get to where I started and overlap a little bit. And I'm going to try this on just to see how that one leg is before I do the other leg. Okay, I tried it on. It's so much better. It just looks normal and natural. It was really quite oddly low before. So same thing to the other leg now. You notice that I didn't cut the elastic to size. I just have like a long string of elastic and I am just doing my little stretch and cutting it off when I get that overlap done at the end. Also, one other thing is I'm using regular polyester sewing thread, like no big deal, nothing special in the thread. I can go right down the middle of the elastic or on the right hand edge. I'd rather not be on the left hand edge and I don't want to get too far from that surged edge. I just want to be along it. It just gives a nicer turn when that whole edge is secured together. Let's make sure both legs feel about the same. And I think they do. Good. So then I can cut off the elastic there. And then we do one more turn to the inside. And I want to just wrap it tight around the elastic. I don't want it soft and mushy here. I want it a nice tight wrap around that elastic. And I'm going to use the same stitch again. It's my zigzag stitch with a three and a half length and width. And this time I do want to be at the inside edge. Before I was at the outside edge, but now I want to be at the inside edge. If I go to the outside edge now, that's where you're going to get a really wiggly seam. It's kind of the same thing, like where I want to seal this edge down again. It's sort of the same thing, but the edge has just flipped over. So now the edge is pointing toward the left. Do you get what I mean? 
and you can use something fancier like a double needle here but i just want to keep this super simple for you and for me and i don't mind the way that zigzag looks at all especially black thread on a black suit you hardly see it good so that's that finished edge now i'm pretty happy with that that's pretty good same on the other side. I do want to hide my back tacks down low. I don't want to have a back tack like at any part of this leg opening that's going to show. So I'd like to have it at the lower part of the leg, not right up on the hip. And then you know what? This is done. That was surprisingly easy. Like I'm even shocked at how easy that was. Now this is the biggest surprise of my whole shopping day. Look. Remember at the beginning, I showed you a skirt that I bought, right? Well, it was on the hanger as a skirt. It was all tucked in like this on the hanger like that. And I thought that the waistband felt a little oddly bulky, but it just looked like a great skirt. And I thought perfect for what I want. So I paid six bucks for it. Off I went, threw it in the washer. I went to hang it up to dry and found out it's a dress. <laughs> So I haven't even tried this one on. So I'm a little bit sad that actually this dress is beautiful. It's so pretty and it feels like it fits perfectly. It feels great, like, ah. Uh. So I'm hesitant to cut it up. So here's the compromise. I'm going out for dinner tonight, so I'm gonna wear this dress once so I get to enjoy it as a beautiful dress before I chop it up. So I, we're just going to a local place, like no big deal. And so I'm trying to make this dress a little bit more casual. So I've got casual jewelry, a little black lace camisole underneath it to make it a little bit more modest. And then I've got my stomping around boots on and a leather jacket. That should be good. And then I will have enjoyed this dress one time before I turn it into a swimsuit cover. I think that's a pretty good compromise. So so if I cut the fabric right at the elastic, that gives me enough fabric at the top of the skirt to fold down a casing for a new elastic for the skirt. But I'm not going to cut the lining there. I'll see if I can do something extra genius with the lining. Okay, the skirt is now just sheer. Now then, this is what's left of the dress. Can I make sort of a little waistband thingy that would stay attached to the top and then I'd still have all of this bottom part of the skirt to be kind of a lining for that skirt if I do kind of want to put it all back together as a dress. Which might be, this might be just like the most brilliant travel ensemble ever, right? Huh, did I just cut that off neatly enough that you won't even see it? And I can just turn this waistband to the inside. Oh, that would be super easy. I don't often just cut things and leave a little bit of a raw edge there, but it might be just all right. Okay. All right. And in my stash, I just found this elastic that's what, like an inch and a half wide. And I had just enough for two lengths of it. So I want that much for the elastic casing times two plus seam allowance right there. Yep, three and a half inches is what I wanna cut below that seam. I think the easiest way might be to stretch this over my ironing board. So just getting it stretched over my ironing board makes it easier to draw a straight line. That definitely helped me to be more accurate getting it over the ironing board. So I've got two elastic bands. Both are comfortably snug around my waist and I'm just gonna sew a little seam in both of them. And then I'm gonna open those up flat and top stitch that edge down. I'm just keeping them joined together just to make this a little bit easier, more efficient. I might use a zigzag for this just so it doesn't start to fray. And again, I like that wider zigzag the three and a half so two waistbands are ready but i'm going to attach them in different ways so next thing i want to do is quarter mark both of these elastic waistbands so the seam is my center back just folding and finding the opposite for my center front Bring those two points together for my two side seams. And of course this soap just washes right off. Then I want to quarter mark the top edge of the skirt 
Now it does not have a center back seam, but it has two side seams. So if I bring those edges together, I can mark the center front and center back. Good, that's ready to go. Now I don't think there is a front and a back to this skirt. I think it's all the same. And now I wanna take my waistband and go right side together with my skirt, matching up all of those quarter points. In fact, I might as well put that seam at the side seam. Then I don't even have to worry when I put the skirt on, I don't have to worry about what is the front and what is the back. It'll all be the same. So matching up quarter points there. So doing it this way, putting them right side together means that the elastic is going to be covered by the nice fabric on the outside. So I think it's a little bit nicer for the skirt, but for the lining, I wanna keep a little extra length. So I'm gonna do it differently on the lining. Back to a straight stitch, still using a regular needle, regular thread. And now I wanna sew all the way around at the edge of my presser foot. And I'll just start with a back tack. Good. And then I'll find my first quarter point here and just give my elastic a stretch as I sew that around. I just wanna keep these edges even. This crinkly fabric makes it a little bit easier because I can kind of just mush in the fabric, really. So now I could just let the elastic be like that if I wanted to keep all of the length, but I think I'd rather have the elastic waist look like this, right? Covered in the fabric. I think that's a little bit nicer. It's a nice tight little wrap at the top. I don't want that soft and mushy. I want it snugly wrapped. And then I could use a zigzag stitch for this too, but I think I'll switch back to a straight stitch. All right, back tack here, the side seam. And then now again, point to point, I want to stretch the elastic. I'm kind of like bringing it down this way just to tighten up that little wrap there. And now I'm going to sew close to the bottom edge of the elastic. And I want to stretch it as I go so that I can stretch it afterwards. I am using a straight stitch, which doesn't have any stretch to it. So I have to definitely stretch as I go. And then look at that's making just a beautiful waistband. That looks great. I hope you can see, I know black on black, it's the curse of my channel, but yeah, it looks beautiful. And the only reason I'm using the straight stitch instead of a zigzag is just because I think it looks nicer. The zigzag would give me that stretch, but this is fine too, just stretch as you go. Ah! <laughs> my needle literally just fell out. Just back up a little bit and keep going. So there's where my needle fell out and I had to like overlap a little bit, but that's fine. Look how nice that waistband looks. It just looks so pro. And it was really easy, wasn't that? Like you could do that, right? Anybody could do that. All right, so I have accomplished what I wanted, which was the swimsuit cover up. But now I'm gonna see if I can just put the other two pieces back together, the top and the lining. I would just have so many options there for my resort wear. For the lining, I'm starting off exactly the same way. So I've got the elastic already quarter marked and now I'm quarter marking the skirt. So right there and right here, good. But now I don't really want to lose any length here because remember I took three and a half inches off this lining, right? So I don't want to lose any length. So on this one, especially since hopefully it's not going to show, I'm going to let the waistband sit above the skirt like that instead of wrapping down. So that means it's just going to sew on top of this edge. So I'm going to surge around this edge for two reasons. One, just to finish that edge, but also to kind of draw myself a line a quarter inch in that I can then take my elastic and cover over so it just keeps me on track and if you don't have a serger you could definitely do this with just a wide zigzag stitch okay so now kind of the same thing except instead of going right side together i'm going wrong side of the waistband on top of the right side of the skirt but still matching up all four quarter points. So you see that the waistband is just overlapping the skirt by a little bit. And again, I apologize for the black on black. What are you gonna do? There are the halfway points. I'll make sure you can see that. It's just overlapping by the amount of the surging, that's it. And I think 
I will go around this time with a zigzag stitch. So I'm trying to bring as much light onto this as I can so that you can see. The elastic is just overlapping the skirt only by the width of the serging. And I want to be zigzagging right on the bottom edge of the elastic, but making sure I'm catching the edge of the skirt. And again, I want to stretch the elastic just so it fits the lining. And honestly, the first way is easier. Like that way that I put right side together and then wrapped it down. I think that's easier because here I just don't have as much control because I'm just covering over. I'm not holding on to the edge of the skirt, but it's going to be fine. Don't worry. So I want to make sure I'm getting enough stretch in there so the elastic fits the skirt. I'm just stretching a little bit as I go and then making sure that each quarter point is matching. And yeah, this one does have an extra little join in it because my elastic wasn't quite long enough. Okay. So that lining is done. So you see how that waistband sits up high and you know there are times when i don't even mind the look of an elastic waistband and you can just do that as a way of you know turning a dress into a skirt it works quite well but then if you don't want to see the elastic you can just flip it down and stitch it that works really nicely too so the lining is done so to finish off the top the bottom edge here i thought i was going to roll around an elastic so i cut it off that three and a half inches below the waist tried it on to make sure i liked it and i actually really liked it i liked it just with this little piece hanging and so I have done this recently and it you know did not turn out great but I think in this case it's going to be better the definition of insanity right doing the same thing expecting a different result and I've got my serger set to do a rolled hem so I've taken out the left needle and I want to have my tension at four three and seven and then my stitch length is on R for rolled. My differential feet I'm leaving at one because I don't want that lettuce edge. And then I do leave my blade up for this. You can put it down so it actually rolls it, but it, to me it looks a little bit messier. So I'm gonna leave my blade up. And just check to make sure I like it. Yeah, I think that's gonna be good. Okay, and then I want to overlap where I started. And then I still don't want to just cut that tail. Make my little knot, stick my pin in, and pull that thread tight around the pin, keeping it really close to the edge. And push that knot as close to the edge as I can before I cut. Okay, that'll do. Okay, I just tried everything on together and it's almost great. So this waistband, as much as I like the way it looked, if it was a normal skirt, I would be done. But because it's so sheer and sitting on top of the swimsuit, this waistband ends up looking really big and thick and heavy. And I just don't like it on the swimsuit. So guess what? It's coming out. This fabric is delicate and I'm not just going to cut the waistband off the way I did to cutting it off the dress because I don't want to lose any more fabric. So I'm just going to be picking it. So anytime I have a delicate fabric that I don't want to damage with the seam ripper, in fact, anytime I'm taking out stitches, I try to just get a tail of thread on one side, snap it back, find the tail of thread on the other side and snap it back. So I use the seam ripper just as little as possible and it goes pretty quickly. It's worth doing, like if you're not satisfied, it's worth doing it again, right? I'll be much happier if I use a much more narrow elastic. I wish that I could take the tie off the top and put on here, but I really do like the top and that tie is part of it I, and I can't have obviously a tie on both that would be like funny looking when I put it all back together so tie has to stay on the top and then this is going to just be a skinny elastic so there you go I'll be showing you three different ways of doing an elastic waist today okay so I got that big heavy elastic off and I'm really glad I did it was too big and heavy right this is such a delicate skirt and if I want it sheer I do not want to 
So I should have thought of that at the beginning. So now I've got this little skinny quarter inch wide elastic and that's gonna do a much nicer job for me here. You can see the line of stitching here where I sewed that big elastic, but I'll be able to get that line out with just a little light steam, no problem. So. I cut a piece of that quarter inch elastic that's comfortably snug on my waist. So I've taken my elastic, joined the ends just with a zigzag back tack there, and then I have marked it into four equal quarters. So I'll take my little join and put it to a side seam just because this skirt really has no front or back. And then match up all four quarters. And this time I'm just going to surge it straight onto the skirt. Okay, so let's just take that straight to the serger. So this is the skirt wrong side up and the elastic on top of it. And I'll start at one side seam. And then I'm just holding that next quarter point. I'll be holding that the whole time, but I'll be stretching it so it'll be off camera. And then I just want to keep my elastic running right along that top edge. I've already got like a little fold here, so I'll just put the elastic against that fold. So I'm trying not to cut the elastic, just surging right on top of it. And I'm back to a regular stitch. So my stitch length is three. I could even go longer. I'll try it at three. And then my differential feet is back to one and all my tensions are back to three. So just a normal four thread surge here. Then I find the next quarter point, hold onto that, give it a good stretch. And notice I'm also holding in the back to keep that stretch happening. Okay, so now that can just turn down. I think I'll just finish that with maybe a three-step zigzag. And that's a much more delicate waistband. So I did like the other one, but it's for a normal skirt, not a super sheer lightweight skirt like this. This is better. Okay, so now I have it on a triple zigzag, like zig, 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 zag, zag, zag. And it's five by two. So now this is the inside edge. I know black on black is hard. I'm gonna fold that edge down and with that triple zigzag, I'll just be going over this edge to just keep that turned nicely to the inside. And again, I wanna do that nice close wrap. See this little serger tail there? I'm gonna just tuck that in, make that disappear that way. So again, with it stretched out, I'll do that triple zigzag. That'll do, I think. I hope I'm happy with it this time. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna try not stretching this section. I think it's fine if you don't stretch it as you sew. If I stretch it while I sew, it kind of holds it out in that stretched out position a little bit and it'll make it too big. So I'm gonna go over this with that triple zigzag without stretching this. The zigzag has enough stretch to it that it will still stretch afterwards, but I don't want it to be held out in a stretched out position. But if your elastic is too tight, then using the triple zigzag, stretching it out as you go, and can loosen it up for you a little bit. So I can try it on again, and hopefully I'm happy with it, and I can show you the finished product. Okay, so here is the line of where I had sewn that elastic and I can see little pinholes from the needle. I don't even have to touch the iron to it. Just a little steam like that and even where it was pretty bad, that should just steam right out. So can you see that line? Much improved with the steam. Okay. So I'm gonna call that one done. So there's the finished waistband on the skirt. I think that looks so much more delicate. I think that is just fine. And you can see the cut of the swimsuit now. <laughs> this is the only way I'm gonna model a swimsuit on YouTube. It's <laughs> with the little skirt cover up. So the leg is higher than it was. It was down here, which really looked odd. So up there is good and still coverage on the back. So I'm happy with that. And I picked up this little belt, which I thought was really pretty with it. So now I'm ready for the resort and the cocktail bar. <laughs> so these two pieces worked out great, like exactly what I was hoping for. I'll just put this cover up on with the other swimsuit top so you can see how that looks. 
good so this one works too. I really like that as a top. I think that's so pretty. And then it gets better because I can put the lining back into the skirt and wear it as a skirt. Oh my goodness, I love this look. This is probably how I'll wear this most often, just as a skirt with the lining still there. Like how brilliant would this be for a travel outfit, right? This is actually working out great. Okay, so that's a good one. But you know what? I can put the top back with this. It's gonna look like a dress again. No, I'm not even kidding. So no, I didn't even have to give up the beautiful dress. I, I could have it all. I could have it all. <laughs> the top, the skirt, the lining. That gives me a swimsuit cover up, a skirt and a dress. Oh my gosh, I could wear this top with other things. Okay, I gotta try that. I'm gonna try the top with other things. And do you remember that top I made a few videos ago that had almost a little peplum and it was like three different fabrics. Anyway, I'm gonna see what that looks like with this skirt. That might be really, really pretty. This is amazing. This is amazing. Well, that just feels like a no brainer. This top is perfect with this skirt. Let's see what else I can put the black top with, right? This top with these fishy pants from one of my first thrift flip videos. When I had this top on with the matching skirt, I tucked in this little peplum thing, but with the fishy pants, I'm leaving it out and I think it looks totally natural and normal and really, really pretty with these awesome pants. Okay, so here is everything from that one thrifting trip. So I got the two pieces for next fall and winter, which I love, I'm really excited about those. My little spring jacket that I turned into more like a denim jacket style. And I love that, that turned out really, really cute. And then my little travel wardrobe. So $6 for the two swimsuits, $6 for this dress that turned into three pieces that gave me so many options for a mini travel wardrobe for a total of $18. That's pretty sweet. That's the beauty of thrifting and upcycling. Thank you so much for being here right to the end. I hope you enjoyed my little mini fashion shows. I loved having you along for the ride. And if that inspired you, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot and makes my day. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And until next time, I'm Catherine Sows. You take care.